We all need what David is talking about inside of us. That is the Holy Spirit. That is God's Holy Spirit meant to live inside of us and all around us. We are walking around in a spiritual world. Every single one of us live our lives, whether you know it, whether you pay attention to it or not, in a spiritual world. And that Holy Spirit in you will open your eyes, the Bible says, open your eyes so you can see what's going on in the spiritual world around you. You can get answers to the questions you've got, to the prayers you pray straight from God through the power of His Holy Spirit and walk in this spiritual world with meaning and victory, not with defeat. Amen. Our next speaker was born and raised a good family man, but unchurched. He began using drugs early and then started manufacturing and selling meth, basically breaking bad. He, he was indicted and sentenced to prison where he heard the gospel, he accepted Christ, and then was baptized in a laundry cart. He's now a pastor, a worship leader. He's involved in prison ministry. He's on the board of a children's orphanage and is a Christian life coach. If you would, put your hands together for Pastor Dan Williams. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Beto gets me wound up, man. Come on. Come on. I thought I was a strong man of God, but he get, every time, man, he gets me fired up. I want to go set the world on fire. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, it says, And he, you, he made alive when you were spiritually dead. See, I was spiritually dead. He said he, I was separated from him because of my transgressions and my sins. See, I, when we're there, we don't even realize we're living out the word of God. I may not be talking to anybody else in this room because y'all all look like y'all never got in no trouble except maybe one or two of you. In which we once walked transgressions and sins. It says we were following the ways of this world. Anybody ever done that? We were influenced by the present age. In accordance with the prince of the power of the air. Can anybody say Satan? The spirit who is now at work in the disobedient. If you're being disobedient to God, you need to understand that you're following Satan. You might not have made a choice and you may not tell it to me out loud. And you certainly ain't going to say it in church. But, it, but you made a choice. If you're acting like what we just read, if you're walking in the ways of this world, you're following Satan. The spirit who is now at work in the disobedient, the unbelieving who fight against the purposes of God. Verse 3. Among these unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh. Our behavior is governed by its sinful self, indulging in the desires of the human nature without the Holy Ghost and the impulses of the sinful mind. We were by nature children under the sentence of God's wrath, just like the rest of mankind. That makes me sick that that was me. I know it's not y'all, but that, that was me. Well, let me just tell you, I'm going to give you a little bit of my story. They don't give me much time. But that's okay. We don't need much time. I did start with a good childhood. My, my parents were good people. They weren't church people. I'm, I didn't go to church. I remember when I was a teenager, my mom got, uh, I don't know what happened to her, but she loaded me and my sister up and took us down to the Baptist church, and we got baptized. I didn't know Jesus from Moses. By God, I was baptized. <clears throat> I didn't have a, I'll tell you another story. When I was a young guy, when I was a young guy, if you did drugs, you guys that ever did drugs, I'd say, I'd say you're an idiot. That is stupid. Who in the world would do drugs? That's a moron that would do drugs. You know what causes a guy to change his mind? Any of y'all ever seen a little sweet girl that kind of smelled kind of good and looked kind of cute? She had one of them little funny, what y'all call it, left-handed cigarettes? She said, you want to smoke this with me? And boy, all that just switched like that. Following the ways of the world. I'm no longer thinking it's stupid to smoke dope. Now I think it's the best thing I, I could ever even think about doing was to smoke that marijuana so that I could be with that little girl. So that me started me down a trail. It wasn't a bad trail. I, I was doing some drugs, but I, God sent a woman into my life, and I quit. I stopped. I stopped. I had a bad marriage, and in that marriage I had two beautiful children, Two beautiful children out of a, a marriage that ended badly. And, and somehow, 
Timing has a way of uh, multiplying. About the same time that my marriage ended badly, my grandfather died. And he was like my best friend. He's the one that taught me how to hunt, and he was the one who taught me how to fish, and basically how to be an outdoorsman, how to be a man. He was a, my, I never heard my grandfather cuss. I never seen him say a bad word to anybody. He was just a good guy, but he died. And I was with him when he died, and it broke my heart. <clears throat> In the middle of all that, that, that started, anybody ever been on a, start, you, you know when you flush the toilet, have you ever washed the water? I know it's kind of gross. That's how my life started. When all that happened, my life started spinning right down that toilet. And one thing led to another. Y'all know this is my time, right? My life started going down a toilet. And I started doing drugs. Started manufacturing drugs, started selling drugs, doing a lot of drugs. No respect for myself, no respect for anybody else. In the middle of that, God gave me a new wife. I disrespected her. I was not the man that she wanted me to be or the man that she needed to be, me to be. I was a drug addict. I don't know what all this is. This is supposed to be my time. One of my clients. Proverbs 22, 6 says, raise up a child in the way he should walk, and when he is old, he will not depart from that. While my dad's testimony is really great, maybe you should hear it from his child. <laughs> this is going to be really hard because I don't like to talk about my father this way because Today, his standards are really high for what a man should look like in my life and in his life. But when I was eight, that standard was really, really low. He set the bar like this. So as I grew up, this was as good as I had to be. This was as good as any man had to be to be in my life because that's where my dad was. And that was okay with me because that's all I knew. And that's all he knew. He thought he was doing a good job. But I remember being eight years old and the highlight of that year for me was getting to wear my pretty little dress and go and visit my father in prison. That was an amazing thing for me at eight. That was fun for me because I got to go see my dad. That's where I found pleasure to go and visit him and have to get patted down at eight years old to make sure I wasn't going to give my dad anything and to watch my mother go and buy clear bags so that she could get in without any trouble. I thought that was cool because we were going shopping. Do you see where the standard was? The standard was right here. So as he gave that testimony and he starts talking about his daughter who thought that it was okay and of course, I wish I was my brother and I never wanted to do that, but, you know, Dad did it and it was this low. Watch me, Dad. Watch me. I can do just like you, Dad. I can be just like you, Daddy. Watch this. But you see, as I got older, suddenly he made a choice that he was going to start going to church, right? Now, I had already started down this path, and he said, you know what? When you come home, you need to come home tonight. We're going to get up in the morning and we're going to go to church. That was a joke to me. I didn't understand that. That didn't make sense to me. That wasn't okay for me. Because I knew my dad was a liar. I knew my dad did things that weren't okay and you just had to be quiet about it. Like, that's what I knew. So I fought him, but he was my dad and there was nothing I could do about it. So I went home that night, didn't go out with my friends, and we went to church the next morning. And for years this went on, him going to church, and I just fought it, and I didn't go, and I thought it was the biggest joke on the planet. But see, what I didn't know is he had taken the bar from here and moved it to here. But I'm still playing down here. And as he grew in his faith, he didn't decided he was going to go to seminary, and I laughed in his face because I thought that was hilarious. You're a criminal. You're a drug dealer. This is what we do. That's not, you're going to be a preacher now? That's where we're going to go with this. Gave me more fuel for my fire. 
because surely he's going to slide. Surely he's going to give it up because the bar is down here. But he stayed consistent with it and never gave up on it. And he continued to go to seminary, and then he became a pastor, and then he was speaking, and then he was leading churches, and he was doing Bible study, and he was doing all these things. So then I had to separate myself from him completely because the God on him was freaking me out. And I didn't understand because I couldn't do what I wanted to do because of the Jesus and him. So I had to completely sever all ties between me and him unless I needed something. Now, as that went on, he continued to get stronger in his faith and get stronger with his love for Christ. And God just kept telling him, just keep loving her. Just keep loving her. Because at this point, now I had become a glorious drug dealer and a user and everything else. I had kids that I couldn't even hold on to. I had all of those things. My testimony is nasty and ugly. But what I want you to hear today is that without him continuously raising the bar... And staying consistent with that and raising the standards that he had for himself and for his family. I would never have even thought any different. That was the life I was going to be content with, but that wasn't okay for him. He kept going and he kept going. And then I end up in a situation where I've got court dates and I've got multiple lawyers and I've got kids scattered all over the place and all of those types of things. And the only place that I knew of that was consistent was my father. Now, mind you, at eight, nothing was consistent. Nothing was okay, and my highlight was going to prison. Now, all of a sudden, I need help, and the person I can go to is my dad. I couldn't go to my mom. I couldn't go to my friends. I couldn't do any of those things. I had nowhere to go except for the one consistent love in my life that never gave up, that never changed, that just continued to move forward and continued to move up. That's where I chose to go. We set the standards down here. Don't be surprised when our kids and our wives and our girlfriends or whatever the case may be, our families in general, think that they can stay down there. The part that's the most important is for you guys to step up and keep moving the bar forward, keep moving it up so that the standards are higher and it's not okay to settle for less. Because once I came to Christ, then all of a sudden I had questions. But I had a lot of garbage. I had a lot of baggage and I needed somebody to trust that understood my baggage. That was my dad. I could go to him about anything. So he set me straight, he dusted me off, he started to love me unconditionally, out loud, for everyone to see, no matter what they judged me, he didn't care, he loved me beyond words. And so I started to raise my bar, and I started to raise my standards, and I started to raise the amount of love that was inside of me and lessen the amount of nonsense I would allow in my life. I became aggressive about it. You're not going to come into my world and destroy what I had built. But then I was stagnant right here. Because you reach a certain point in your life where you're supposed to marry, date someone seriously, whatever it is that you're looking for. But see, as a child, my standards were this. As a teenager, my standards were this. So I ended up with three children, with three baby daddies. That's where my standards were. So when I got onto my feet and I started to understand who I was and who I could be, my standards in men were raised because my example was my father and he accepted nothing less than to be going upward and onward. So you couldn't step to me unless you had a strong faith game. You couldn't step to me unless you had your stuff in a group. You couldn't even talk to me. If you didn't have a testimony, which means it's behind you. You have to have a testimony to step to me. Because let me tell you, I'm not a quiet person. And I will stand in front of a group of men and tell you, raise the bar. You can't be no small man and get with the kind of woman that you guys are talking about. You can't be that. Because when our standards are raised that high, we need you to be able to stand on your own two feet and handle your load and then carry us when we can't carry it anymore. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
Things have changed in the world, and women are trying to run things. That's not the way it goes. The word says that women are to submit. Be worth submitting to. Give them a reason to want to lift you up. Give them a reason for for speaking you highly to everyone they know. My husband, whoo. Like I said, I had really high standards, and you weren't going to step to me unless you had a testimony. And let me tell you, my husband's testimony is pretty powerful itself. I don't know if anybody in here has ever gone down, but my man's got a real long record. And that's okay because his standards are real high now. You ain't going to shake him. You ain't going to knock him over. You're going to have to come with some strong game just to kind of make him do like this. He follows me around. You know how strong he is? He's going to allow me to be on a stage in front of a group of 100 men to tell them, raise the bar. That's how strong he is. Now, I would never have that man if my daddy hadn't set the example for what I should expect from a husband. Women are crazy, y'all. We're nuts. We're emotional, and we don't understand some things. We need you guys to stand on your own two feet and be there and know things. When I'm weak, I need him to go, baby, let's pray. Or did you get into Proverbs? Did you read the devotional that we do every morning together? Did you do that? Do we need to go to church? Did you get your worship on? Hey, let's put some, whatever the case may be, I need him to be there for me because I am weak. And in my moments, I need him without fail to be on his own two feet. And it was so exciting to me when my dad asked me, do you think you'd be willing to speak? Absolutely, I'd be willing to speak. It It makes me so proud that this many men are willing to sit down and go, you know what, I'm weak and I need help. That is a beautiful thing. There's a hundred men in here right now. They're going to walk out here on two feet and not easily be blown over. That is beautiful. That is amazing. And if you guys don't go out and get two more people to come back here and do the same thing, then you need to come back and do it again. This is, this is a big deal, y'all. I'm, I'm serious. This encounter is a huge deal. There is countless amount of women out there that are lost. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to do it. And they're tired of doing it. It's not our role and it's not our place. Take it back. We don't want it. Do what you got to do to take that load off of our shoulders because it's yours. We need you. Raise the bar. When you go home tonight, think about the standards that you've set for your kids. What have you allowed to be okay? What have you said is tolerable? What have you said is okay? How many in here, just to raise a hand, how many people have daughters? When you go home tonight, think about how it's going to make you feel if she decides to marry a man just like you. Just like you. With all your anger issues, with all your lust issues, with all the mental disorders, with all of the anxiety, with all of that. Are you okay with that? Because if you ain't, let's get it fixed. So her, her standards raised. The bar is raised. The men that she goes after is raised. Let's help our daughters. Let's help our wives. Let's do a better job. We need you guys. And this right here is a beautiful thing. I beg you to find yourself this weekend. To find your place, to find what God has designed you to be. To listen to him, to hear him, and then convey that to your children. Convey that to your wives. Love is okay. Softness is okay. Kindness is okay. Please. I'm begging you. Find out what they need and raise the bar. Thanks, guys. That's my baby girl, y'all. Let me tell you something. I'm not nobody special. 
The word of God says he is no respecter of persons, what he did for me. Guys, this broke my heart to sit there and let her tell you that I set the bar that low. It sucks. But you know what? I'm going to tell you a secret. I don't know if this applies to anybody in this building. We're entering into a time. I am a life coach, and almost everybody on the planet right now is in a time of transition. I even heard that word one time when people were going across. Why? Because we've never been here. We've never done this. We don't understand COVID and, and all, the, all the social unrest and all the things we're seeing. We've never experienced this. So we were kind of unstable, and we don't know what to do, but I'm going to tell you what to do right now. God's put a calling on all your life. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's to raise the bar. If it's to raise the bar, get busy. Raise the bar. But then you say, but brother, I don't even know how to do that. I don't even know where to start. I'm going to tell you where I started. You start on your knees. You learn to hear from God. Guys, get, write this down. I need everybody, everybody write this down. Then say yes. Whatever God asks you to do, you simply say yes. People say, man, I can't, I can't give my life to God because if I give my life to God, he might have me go to Africa. Guess what? Africa. I said, I haven't been there. By the way, hi to all my brothers in Africa. You want to go to Africa? Come go with me. I got 60 kids over there that call me Poppy. Love each and every one of them. But you know what? All I did was say yes to God. God said, hey, let's go to Africa. And I said, okay, whatever. It might be cool. What else could he might tell you to do? Go to prison? I've been there. It's a whole different story the day they took me back in there to minister. <laughs> you couldn't drove a 10-penny nail up my, you know what, when we went through them doors. Because I wasn't sure they were going to open them back up. But you know what? I just told God, yes. And I walked in, and there was 500 men, and we were all on our face, and we were all crying out to God, and we were all worshiping God. And God said, I created you just for this. All I said was, yes, man. Here's the deal. When you, when you have a past like I had, and then your daughter goes off the rails like mine did, everybody around me says, you know what to do. You need to straighten her out. You need to stop her from doing that. You see the road she's going down. You know that road. I got on my knees and went to my heavenly father. I said, what do I do with this wayward child? He told me the hardest thing he's ever told me in my life to do. Going to Africa, nothing. Going back into prison to minister, nothing. He said, I want you to love her unconditionally. Everybody's got my ear. You need to clamp her down. You need to go out and get her. You need to stop her. You need to pull her off the streets. You need to this. You need to that. I go back to my heavenly father and I say, Father. What am I going to do with this girl? She's wrecking her life. She's got three baby daddies. Every one of her babies was born with drugs in their system. Father, what do I do? I already told you, I want you to love her unconditionally. God, I'm going to tell you something. We're, 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 we're not nece necessarily hardwired to do that. It is in our DNA. We want to take charge, right? We fix stuff. That's what we do. We're guys. We fix stuff. We're gonna, I'm going to fix her, but I didn't do it. I'm telling you, it's the hardest thing I ever do to watch my daughter self-destruct, and I'm the only one on the planet that's holding out for her and loving her unconditionally. Uncondi I'm talking about spit in my face, take my money, whatever, and just keep loving her. So I want to encourage you, if you've got kids that are going south on you, love them. Just like videos we've seen and everything else about God so loved the world. That's the way he wants us as men to love our children. Just learn to say yes. Just learn to say yes. I read to you Ephesians 2, 3, 1, 2, and 3. It was talking about when we were without God. Ephesians 2, 4 is one of my favorite verses, Pastor Beto, in the Bible. You know what it starts out with? But God. I lived a long part of my life, and I was known as 19665077. That's what the world thought of me. When I went to go apply for a job, I was 19665077. That was my name. But I got a new name. <laughs> for those of my brothers that speak Spanish, I, yo soy un hijo, un hijo del rey. For those of you who do not speak Spanish, I'm the son of a king. The Bible calls me a royal priesthood. It says, I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. That I am seated with him in heavenly places. My perspective is up here looking down on the problems, not in the middle of a problems crying out. I've been elevated. I've been restored. I've been redeveloped. I've been reconstructed from the ground up. 
I just want to encourage you men. This is a, this is a, every time we go somewhere and get fired up, we get a preacher going, we get some good music going, we get fired up. I just want to encourage you today that, that that's not that day that you go home and tomorrow it's, it's business as usual. You know what I'm saying? Make a note, whatever you want to do. Let's let tonight be the night that we start reestablishing ourselves, reestablishing our love for our children, start raising the bar, start being the men that God's called us to be because everybody in this world is in transition and they're looking for somebody that's solid and somebody that has strength and somebody that's walk, that has a strong faith walk with God. Be that guy. I'm encouraging you. i got a minute. I'm, I'm going to spend a minute encouraging you to be that guy. Be that guy for your family. Be that guy for your wife. Be that guy for the people at work. Be that for the guys, uh, the, the people in your neighborhood. Be that for the guy. You'll be surprised who God will, will, will put in your path. People, are, people will draw from you. What God put you into this weekend, people will draw from that. You understand what I'm saying? All right. I just want to pray for you guys before I get out of here. Father, we love you and praise you. We give you glory. We thank you. Father, I thank you for my daughter. I thank you that I can take her with me and she can, and she can speak to a group of men boldly and she, can, and she can convince them out of the Holy Spirit that you put in her heart. Father, I thank you for our strong testimony. I thank you for the invitation from Bet Harvey to come down here and speak the word of God to these men. And Father, I thank you mostly that you're going to do a work here this weekend that we don't even understand and it is exceedingly abundantly more than we even already believe it to be. Father, we draw the line in the sand. <laughs> we draw the line in the sand. We're done playing. We're done playing. We're fixing to get real. We're fixing to get right. Uh, we're going to elevate. We're going to reconstruct. And we're going to be what God called us to be. We're going to start being mighty men of God. We're going to be hijo del rey. So, Father, we give you glory and we give you praise and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here, slick. All right. All right. It's my pleasure and honor to introduce my brother Brian Stewart. He is a founder and man of the ministry of Bold Men Ministry. He's a mighty warrior. He's about to share his very past powerful testimony of God has done in his life. Come on, Brian. Thanks, brother. 